Welcome, everybody, to our Star Shot panel. I'm Matthew Tift, and I'm going to pass it over to Joe next, just to st say a little bit about uh, anything you want to introduce yourself to start. Okay. Hi, I'm Joe. Um, I got roped into doing this because Matthew invited me to help talk about Star Shot. Uh, I am particularly interested in just um, being able to help spread the word about things that are going on in the Drupal community and ways for people to get involved. Uh, I've, I've also been to a lot of Drupal cons and involved with Drupal, particularly on the documentation side for a, a really long time. So that's me. You want to say? <laughs> This is all very unorganized. Right. Uh, hi, everyone. Martin Anderson, Quit, Senior Solutions Engineer with Acquia, a longtime member of the Drupal community. Have tended to be more involved in the contrib space. So, for me, one of the things that's super exciting about Starshot is the idea of having Drupal as something that is easily adopted and can be sort of the entry point for people, like just one to, to try Drupal for the first time, being able to, to get some of the goodness of the, the you know, the contrib space as opposed to just sort of the narrower set of experiences that you can get from Drupal Core. So um, maybe before we get too far in, can we sh see a show of hands? Who here had never heard of Starshot before, like, let's say yesterday morning? Okay, so that's what, more than half the room, it seems like. Okay, so this is the right room, I feel like, for us to have this conversation. Yep. Yeah, so. Um, I, I, so, yeah. I, I put together a couple of slides to just help introduce uh, Starshot and talk a little bit about um, generally what it is. Uh, and then that's going to take us, I don't know, maybe like five, ten minutes at the most. And then we're just going to open it up for uh, discussion if people have questions. Um, I've got some questions that I'm going to ask these guys if you don't have questions. So it'll be good. Um, so, oh, this is our agenda. What is Starshot? And then what do you want to know about Starshot? Uh, and we'll try to answer it. Uh, that part. Um, okay, so I thought that just sort of like a little bit of background. You go and you install Drupal, right? Today, you install Drupal 11. I actually just did this this morning and took this screenshot. And the, so for someone who is new to Drupal and this is their first time using Drupal, they might go to like simplytest.me or whatever they use to spin up an instance of Drupal. It runs and then they're presented with this page, which isn't terrible compared to what it was a couple years ago, but it's still not great. Um, you end up on this page, it's like, welcome! You don't have any front page content. You're like, well, okay. Um, what do I do now? And one of the things that's for a long time been a challenge with Drupal is it's, you know, it's relatively easy, let's say, to install it, and then it's really hard to know what to do after you've got it installed. It's like, you want to create an event uh, and it's some calendars on your, or you, you want to create events in a calendar to view them, it's like, that's great. First, you have to learn Composer and install a bunch of modules. First, you have to know what a module is. You have to be able to find the modules. And then the module isn't even called calendar. It's probably called like views or smart date or like better <laughs> calendar widget. Um, and then you need a PhD in creating content types with fields and entity API and all this stuff. Um, and really all you wanted to do was just test it out and see what Drupal's all about. Um, in my mind, part of what Starshot is trying to do is solve some of that um, I guess friction when people first uh, want to get involved with Drupal. This is the uh, long-winded mission for Starshot. I won't read the whole thing out loud, um, but basically the idea is to, for the community to put effort into um, improving Drupal in ways that will improve the initial experience of someone who is coming to evaluate Drupal for the first time um, so that they have a positive first experience with it. Um, to target a specific set of people. So typically in Drupal, we say, Drupal, you can build anything with it. It's for everyone. And it is. It really is a powerful tool, and it should be for everyone. But also, sometimes we need to be a little bit more opinionated and focused. And so part of Starshot's goal is to provide some of that guidance uh, for decision making so we can say, nope, uh, in this scenario where we need to make a decision about whether the installer should work this way or that way, we know who the persona is that we're going to target, so let's make it work for them. Um, the persona right now for Starshot is um, marketing? Ambitious, Ambitious marketers. marketers. <laughs> yep. Um, whatever that means. Um, and so that's kind of, this is the mission for Starshot. 
Um, we could we could just add to that too if you want. There, yeah. uh, if you don't mind me jumping in, I there don't. is a there's a whole document about um, Star Shot. Like, what is it called, Martin? Like the marketing plan or something? The mar I mean, can you go to Drupal.org slash Starshot? Isn't that the page oh, that yeah. has all the... Drupal.org slash Starshot. Maybe that has it. Start shot. Yeah, I realized how often you can misspell that word. But there is a whole page that describes the key persona, if you want to learn more about it. The initiative. There's this whole thing about... Uh, well, anyway, I won't... You, I think maybe... Even, you say real things, and I'll find that page. <laughs> <laughs> real things. You say real things. Real things. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, I think I think a big part of it is that just having some documents and um, things like a user persona that we as a community can refer to when it's time to make hard decisions and to make it easier for us to more quickly make some of those decisions. Um, no, I don't have my slides anymore. But the. <laughs> Another thing that I think Starshot is set out to do is that thing where you, you go to a, you install Drupal. Anybody that's built sites with Drupal before, you install Drupal core, and then you immediately install like 20 or 30 other modules. And nobody actually builds a Drupal site with just Drupal core. Um, there's a lot of modules that we use, and probably most of us use a lot of the same ones, right? Like every single one of us installs Path Auto as soon as we install Drupal before we start building a site. And so it's kind of a weird experience for someone who is new to Drupal and doesn't know that you need to also install these 25 um, vetted modules that everyone in the community uses. Uh, and so part of what Starshot is attempting to do is surface a lot of that stuff that you know we as professionals who have been doing this for a very long time already know in a way that makes it accessible to people who are just getting started with the project. Um, so that's a, a big part of the problem that we're trying to target here. I have a yes. Sorry, non-developer person over here. So are we talking like like a paperclip pops up and they're like, hey, you should you know install some shenanigans on here. That's how this works. Like what are we what is it? Yeah, we are not building Clippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it that we're actually Yes. Um the the goal is to build a what is essentially a distribution or a productized version of Drupal. So when you go to Drupal.org, instead of just being presented with download Drupal core, um, there is a future in which you will be presented with a download Drupal core or download what is now referred to as Drupal CMS, which will be Drupal core plus those 20 or 30 modules that everyone is using all the time, plus a, some additional tooling to help you better understand how to make use of those modules to get started building a site. Yeah. Um, I just want to add to that quickly. Part of the experience that's being designed for that introduction is also an installer where you get to say, as a marketer, I want to do specific things. So I want to manage events, or I need to you know, have the most advanced SEO capabilities or different kinds of things, and then it will also add additional modules, configure them in ways yeah. that, you know, again, as the community, we've decided our best practices to get you started to make sure that you have those capabilities out of the gate. Yeah. There's, from a technical perspective, the kind of major initiatives that are part of Starshot are uh, automatic updates, project browser, recipes, and the experience builder. I also wanted to point out to this sort of terminology here, Drupal Starshot and Drupal CMS. Um, I think of it as Starshot is kind of like the name of the initiative. Drupal CMS is the work product that this initiative is going to end up creating. Um, Starshot's like the code name, um, I guess. Um, but these are kind of the, the fundamental building blocks of this Drupal CMS that Starshot is working on in order to make the experience for people who are new to Drupal and just getting started with it a more positive experience. Um, automatic updates, I mean, I have more, much more detailed slides, but we'll go through these really quick. So automatic updates is adding to Drupal the ability to um, automatically install security updates. So when a new security com update comes out on Wednesday, you just don't have to do anything, it gets installed for you. Um, it's kind of the, at a, the very base level uh, what automatic updates is trying to solve. 
Um, there is Project Browser, which is an initiative to add a utility to the Drupal interface that will allow you to browse for and install modules without having to go to drupal.org or worry about Composer. Um, fundamentally, it still uses those things in the background, but what it will do is we'll provide people who are, again, new to Drupal with an interface with right from the first page that you end up on, you can say, hey, I want to install some new modules, and there'll be a list of them that you can browse through. Basically, a, a user interface for installing modules on, um, in Drupal. Uh, recipes, which uh, Martin gave a presentation on yesterday. Recipes are essentially a way to bundle up a um, configuration or, um, how do you want to say this? Recipes are a way to take your best practice ideas for how to build an event, how to create a calendar with views, what the content type should look like, and put them into a reusable recipe that can be very quickly applied to a site. And the idea here is that with Starshot, there will be recipes that the community has created that sort of espouse what are like our best practices for how to configure a blog content type. And then when you first install Drupal, the installer will present you with a bunch of those recipes. And you can pick, you know, like, oh, you know what? I want to have events, I want to have a blog, and I want to sell widgets. And so you say, install those three recipes, um, and when Drupal completes the installation, instead of just ending up with a basic page content type, you'll end up with Drupal installed plus what those recipes have applied. Uh, so that's a big part of it. Another part of recipes is this is the tool that we will use in order to help determine which of those like 20 or 30 additional modules need to be installed for Drupal to work. So it gives us the opportunity to, instead of having to say, take every useful module from Contrib and put it in core, and instead have these recipes in core or easily accessible that say, here's a bunch of the useful Contrib modules if what you're trying to do is build an event system. Uh, and then finally to add a, uh, easy, <laughs> a better page building system uh, to make a visual editor that allows you to um, more quickly assemble things like landing pages within Drupal. Again, that uh, Preston talked about this yesterday with the universal editor, but kind of the, one of the things that people really want to do with uh, their CMS is build web pages and, um, the idea with Experience Builder is to provide a tool in core that makes it easier to do that. This is, if you've used Layout Builder or Paragraphs or Gutenberg or any of these various editors that you can use with Drupal right now, I think this is kind of like the next uh, iteration of that tooling. Will it be using one of those three things or uh, some new thing that's being developed? Yeah, the question is, will Experience Builder be using one of those existing tools like Layout Builder or Gutenberg, or is it something new? It is something entirely new. It will be, it is very much informed by um, those tools that are already widely in use and the things that people are using them for, um, but it is a new thing that will replace them. Um, there are, you know, some, in addition to like those sort of like technical bits of work that are, Starshot is attempting to accomplish. The other thing that the initiative wants to do is just have some guiding principles that will make development a bit faster. Um, the idea is to um, have a persona and a mission that we can reference so we can more quickly make technical decisions, um, to have people and processes in place so that uh, those decisions can get made more rapidly, to prioritize a specific like vertical instead of like, hey, Drupal can do anything for everyone. It's like, no, for this part, we're going to say, we've picked the person that we're building for and it'll help us make some decisions more rapidly. I hope I'm not lying about any of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are, um, there is a, a different governance structure for how things will be added to and decisions will be made for Starshot, different than it is for Drupal core currently. Um, it's a lot of the same faces, a lot of the same people are involved, um, but the governance model for how decisions are made um, is different. Um, 
I think that's important because part of what Starshot is trying to do is make sure that decisions can get made and be made more rapidly rather than having your issue um, sit in the Drupal.org issue queue for six or seven years before we finally get to update the content of the welcome page. Uh, maybe we could just do it like next week. Um, these are the people who are kind of at the top of the Starshot chain, as it were. Uh, there are a bunch of other people involved uh, with this. A lot of the work in Starshot has been broken up into what are referred to as work tracks. Uh, there's like 20 some different tracks at the moment, um, and each track has a leader. The leaders for those tracks are empowered with some authority to make decisions about um, code that gets added in order to facilitate them accomplishing the goals of that track. Whew. That's my uh, very quick introduction to Starshot. Sure. Right. Thank you, Joe. I, I wanted to uh, reveal, I guess, some of these things that might be more difficult if you're interested in following or reading more with all of this, but there is this meta issue in this new project that is now, we, we named this Drupal CMS once we decided on a name. Um, and all of those work tracks are listed here. And all of the people that are involved have been meeting like, you know, in our own, it, it's like a, it's like this custom group of people that are like building something new. It feels like another job for me in a weird way. And Dries is kind of leading it, and there's these like regular monthly meetings, and then we have like bi-weekly meetings with those leadership folks. And then there's also like this advisory committee, and they want to have a lot of people that aren't developers that are involved, like UX people, people that know um, design and that kind of thing, making choices, people that are product owners that know about building a product, because Drupal has so traditionally been about building like for technical folks, like when I've been involved in other core initiatives, it was always like, we built Olivero, and it was a bunch of us who were just kind of working together, and we built this thing, whereas this is so different, because all of these are supposedly supporting those same goals. So I thought one great thing would be to hear from Martin, because he has been involved in a couple of these, and you are a track owner of one of them in particular, the events recipe, and I think it would be great just to get a sense of like some of the different kinds of things that are happening. And none of these things are guaranteed to be part of Starshot, but each of these are, each of us who are working on a track, we're like working towards this thing that may or may not get included in the final. So I'll let Martin just say, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe start by saying there were a number of things like at a technical level and some of like features and things that I covered in my session yesterday, so I probably won't go too far into that, uh, but really talk about sort of my experience of being a track lead and, and, you know, some of the ways that that's, you know, like impacted my time, I guess I would say, on a week-to-week -week basis. So um, it's definitely been an interesting process in terms of, um, you know, being very different, certainly in terms of like the feel and the tone of the conversation and, and the sense of urgency than like you would get with Drupal Core, where like I'm sure a lot of us in this room have like commented on an issue that like was started eight years ago and maybe like six years before it ever gets resolved. Uh, whereas the whole point of Starshot is to say, you know, like one of the most significant things about Starshot was not only the scope of what was being proposed, but the timeline. So I'm not sure to what extent we actually said, but it was announced back in, what was it, May? Yeah. And, and the goal is to have an MVP by the end of the year. So I mean, I think we're like basically halfway already. So, uh, but the cool thing is a lot of things are coming together and uh, there's been tremendous progress even over the last couple of weeks. So um, yeah, I mean, you can really start to see the things taking shape, but but yeah, it's this this whole idea of these you know different groups that are are sort of empowered to be change makers, and to me that's one of the things that I think is really exciting about uh, Starshot is, is really seeing the initiative um, momentum uh, starting to build up and, and starting to see a lot of these pieces start to really come together in ways that that are actually really exciting. So. Um, 
I think you're going to probably see uh, even more of that in a couple of weeks when the recordings of like the, the Barcelona Dries note come out. Um, and, and that'll start to, I think, sort of like put a lot more meat on the bones of what we're talking about, you know, conceptually. Um, so I'm not sure how much so more than that can I say. I have some questions for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Why is it called Starshot? I can start. Um, so, so Dries basically drew the analogy between sort of the moonshot of the, the JFK administration as sort of this ambitious project that helped to sort of, in a way, move the country forward in a number of, of important ways. I mean, certainly there was like the danger of being left behind technologically and, and the way that also having this ambitious idea sort of catalyzed a number of different, you know, sometimes fractious groups and got everybody sort of moving uh, together in the same direction and achieved something that was remarkable and made them, you know, a leader in the world. And so the idea of saying, you know, in the same way that back in the 60s, the U.S. had sort of fallen behind the Soviet, it, Soviets in the space race, uh, the moonshot was a way to say, we're going to take leadership again. The idea is for Drupal to say, you know, you look at where the excitement is in the CMS community, and in a lot of ways, it hasn't necessarily been behind Drupal, you know, in the last few years. And so to say, let's, let's put, you know, our resources collectively behind an idea that we think is going to, you know, give us a lead in excitement again. Yeah. Uh, something to say about that too. <laughs> yeah, this initiative, some people don't really talk about this much, but it grew out of research that they did saying Drupal might become irrelevant soon. And who is they? Who did people. Uh, I think it was Lori <laughs> and some of and, and I'm not sure. I don't know exactly who was looking at da data, but people that were, I think it was the core committers. Maybe that's who it was. Core committers. Um, some of the people who are, are, are thinking about big picture stuff in terms of Drupal. And like usually at a Dries note, Dries is like, okay, here's the new features of the next version of Drupal. And here, you know, look at this new thing that we've created. Oh, now we have layout builder. Now we have configuration management, whatever. This was more like a call to arms to say, we don't want to fall into irrelevance. For me personally, that, that reflected in conversations I've had like with my nephew, who is a computer science major, and he was asking me what I do, and he and said, oh, you're a programmer? I said, I do Drupal, and his, think, his response was, oh, that's old. <laughs> and it is, I mean, you know, it's old. And I'm like, yeah. So Dries, in some sense, wants to make this uh, easier to use. I think another thing for me, the, the star shot idea, was that the, the, the solution is to essentially take all of the stuff that we, and this isn't actually me talking, because there were these boffs that we had with Dries, biggest boffs I've ever been in at a DrupalCon. And they were saying like, oh, agencies, people that work on Drupal, they know to do all of these things. Others don't. Let's create this thing where you don't have to write any code. You can do it all in the browser. You can click together a site, and you can be, pro be productive. There's a hand up there. We have a hand up. So you mentioned the word agencies. I, I know you work for an agency. I uh, own an agency. And there's a lot of probably other people here that either work in agencies. All of us have sort of our own star shot, I believe, already, in that we have our preferred ways of how to build events and to do this or to do that. And so I'm curious if you see a world where most or all agencies start with Drupal CMS, or do you see an alternative world where the Drupal CMS is more for uh, beginners and ambitious marketers and people who don't have that core knowledge and the way that they want to do it? I have thoughts about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the question is, like, Starshot gets built, Drupal CMS is the product of that. Do we envision that agencies will all adopt Starshot and everybody's starting from the same thing? Or kind of like, how does this play into like me as an agency owner or someone who works at an agency? Is that? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I guess the opposite of that too. You know. Yeah. And, and if not that, who is it for? And how is everyone else using it? Yeah. I think 
one of the things that I think happens here is um, I don't think the end goal is, and now everybody that builds a Drupal site builds them exactly the same. Um, I think that parts of Starshot, like getting recipes done, and as part of Drupal core and getting things like automatic updates into Drupal core make those tools available for everyone whether every shop uses the same recipe or not i don't i i don't see that being the case i think there will be some where at university people are like yeah if you want a blog content type it's these three fields that's a great starting point um, but also it empowers your agency to build the recipes that make sense for you um, but there is a sort of community supported way to do that. Um, and for you to take a lot of your own institutional knowledge and put it into something that is more easily repeatable um, and quicker to use. Um, and, and then the other part of it, I think, too, is um, as in, from the agency perspective, especially from like a sales perspective, I think having Drupal be more complete out of the box um, will give Drupal a better seat at the table when it comes to having these conversations about like which CMS are you going to choose. I think right now there's a scenario where you show up to try to, you know, sell a theoretical um, client on a CMS, and you're, they're like, well, we've got these four that we can choose from, and they're like, all right, cool. Like when you install them. Um, what do you do with it? And you install WordPress, and you start blogging, and you install something else, and you start building a page, and you install Drupal, and it's like nothing. Um, and it, it's, it just leaves a really bad first impression right now. And while maybe the better first impression doesn't help you specifically build sites, I think it helps Drupal be relevant in the conversation about which CMS to choose. Um, and so the, I think from that perspective, in terms of like, who does this benefit? Uh, I think it, it's a largely about like the evaluator experience. Um, so people, when they first try Drupal, have a positive first experience. Maybe they really do build some uh, relatively easy sites with it. Um, and then later, they go on to work with an agency or use some of the more complex features of Drupal. But at least they're starting with Drupal instead of installing Drupal and being like, yeah, what I'm going to start with is actually WordPress. That's, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, Steve. My take on it is that I do expect consolidation, even in the agency space, for a, a handful of reasons. Maybe the biggest one is the, the dominance of billable hours. So I, I've yeah. been out of the, the agency, an agency job myself for nine years. But when I was at Palantir.net, like, we had a spreadsheet where we you know, planned how we would use our billable hours by counting the number of content types we had to build in a rough estimation of the number of fields on each content type. And like, I'm imagining the conversation that I would have need to have had with my boss then, Ken Ricker, or the conversation I would need to have with my client who's, who's provided us with 1,200 billable hours for this project. And if even if I do want to build my own event content type, because I think my conceptualization of events is better than the de facto standard event recipe, I would need to explain both to my boss and to my client, it is worth X billable hours, which mm -hmm. translates to $1,000, because my idea of the recipe is that much better than the one that's, or my idea of events is that much better than the recipe that's in Starshop. Mm -hmm. I think that is a losing argument for me as the individual site builder <laughs> who wants to build my own event. Yes. <laughs> Jared. But the same time, now that the framework's in place, if you do have a better idea, you don't need to pitch it because we're going to spend an extra thousand dollars on every product because I think it's too necessary. You can build your own recipe or mm -hmm. yeah, or can yeah. expand the community recipe right. to be able to. Or, or submit a pull request or patch to the Starshot event content type because I can't. Yeah, I think too, like, this is a bit more technical, but I think one of the things that's interesting about recipes as the solution here is, un unlike something like a distribution or features that you may have used in the past, recipes are a thing that you apply once and then you just build forward from there. 
Uh, it's not a thing that you, like, if you use the lullabot definition of a recipe, you are now tied to the lullabot definition of a recipe forever. It was just a quick starting point, and you can go and modify and change any of that. And so I do think there's a sort of like, you want to build a calendar? Like, that's a lot of clicking in a view. Um, click this once, it'll save you 20 minutes and get you started, and, and then you can modify it and customize it for your specific use case. Yeah, I just want to add, I feel like there's also a big opportunity for agencies to actually deliver a lot more value for a particular client's budget. So as opposed to like building a lot of the same things again and again, to be able to have sort of like community agreed upon best practices on certain ways to implement things, and then that allows you to like quickly implement all of those like fairly boilerplate things and really focus the remaining budget on being able to say, let's really dig into the things that are going to create a lot of value in terms of like the things that your customers really need that aren't just like a very generic blog or like the simplest form of an event, but like actually tailor those much more tightly to their actual business needs. I bet if you step back too, there's probably a lot of stuff that like all of us are we're all doing the same way. We're all already independently arriving at the same decision. And so if we can kind of encapsulate a lot of those things and make them reusable, it frees up our time to not have to deal with that um, and focus on the things that really bring value to a specific project. Well, and even like when you think about the community, if there are certain things that we can all agree on, we can take each of those things much further together as opposed to, yeah. you know, his point, individually sort of duplicating that effort on sort of similar things. Yeah, I'm going to add the agency perspective too. I think I'm the only <laughs> one of us that currently works at an agency. So I, I've built lots of websites for higher ed organizations. Lullabot works with CMU and Harvard and Yale and Princeton and, and Southwest State University. Southwest State <laughs> University <laughs> and so, okay, so that's a great, we have someone in the audience from South, uh, South, South, Dakota. South, Dakota. South Dakota State University. I recently worked on the University of Wisconsin, University of Massachusetts, no, University of Massachusetts Amherst for a couple of years, and I can't say their name, on so many of the education websites that I've worked at, they had very similar goals. They wanted to try and attract new students. They wanted to show events. They wanted to have faculty pages, bio pages, all these kinds of things where they really didn't need us to reinvent the wheel. So just in the same way that we took all the work we did for the state of Georgia to Georgia Public Broadcasting, and then took some of that work and then shared it to the next university we worked on, we ended up building a lot of similar, I have built a lot of the same, you know, like here is my hero, <laughs> you know, here is my event content type, here is my person content type. So what Lullabot will probably do, and all of this I'm just guessing at, we'll come up with our own ways that we like to do things. We might share it like we do, like we right now share these things called architectural decision records about how we think we should build every single set. These are not the ways that things are automatically done in the Drupal community. These are the ways we do things at Lullabot. And we share that because we think this should be the standard. And until it becomes the standard, this is where we share it. So I think with some of these things with the Drupal CMS, this is a way where some of us who are leading tracks have like an out, we have a bit more of an opinion that we get to share in this thing that people will maybe use. And so these might become more de facto. And I can talk about the track that I'm working on, which is like, the dashboard uh, track, and this track um, is something I'm going to switch over here. <laughs> it, it, we're, we're going to re trying to replace the screen that you see when you log in. This is actually the screen. It tells me I've been a member for 46 seconds, right? And there. There are lots of modules that fix this. There's the dashboards with layout builder. There's the verbase dashboards that works with a particular uh, uh, distro. There's the user dashboard that uses a bootstrap. Theme. There's all these things like that. We're building a dashboard module intended for core, intended to be more flexible, intended to be in Drupal CMS, and now 
I have these UX people, I don't know. I honestly don't know who made these wireframes, but this is what's gonna be in Starshot because that's what they told us. This is what we'd like it to be on. And I'm just saying, yeah, we're all working together. I'm not an expert on what you should see as soon as you install your Drupal site. So I think to get back to the sort of agency thing is I think we're gonna have some of these things come through through this that people share, but then I think every agency and every organization is gonna have their own little secret sauce of how they wanna do things so we don't have to repeat the same stuff and we can start working on newer, cooler things. That's my take. Yeah. So kind of on the opposite side of that spectrum then, as somebody who's new to Drupal, about a year or two on in, and you know, I'm just, I'm gonna talk to somebody a little bit later about Twig, and starting to learn more about modules. What's the learning curve gonna be like adjusting to this? Corollary to that, moving towards Drupal 11, is this gonna become the de facto installation, or what's that looking like for somebody who's new to Drupal, gonna have to learn this stuff, get up to speed with it? Anybody, thoughts, Corby? Yeah, for sure. So, as it stands right now, today they're, they're, the concept is that when you go to the front page of Drupal.org, you'll see basically two boxes. And one is to say, you know, are you a marketer or somebody who just wants to try out Drupal? Click on this button, it'll, it'll basically install Drupal directly in your browser. You get all the things that we're talking about in terms of recipes. You can choose which capabilities you want included in the initial install, all that stuff. So you get that robust initial experience. Or you can choose the other path of saying, I'm more of the developer, I want to like install something that's like more of just the base framework that I can use to sort of like build up some kind of a, of a custom application. I will say as well that there is a significant uh, part of the overall Starshot initiative is also focused specifically on documentation. So having better documentation that's not so developer focused um, to, to make it easier for people to sort of like get started using it and sort of, you know, make that initial path gentler as opposed to, you know, like we've probably all seen the, the old like cartoon of the Drupal learning curve that's like giant cliff and people falling off it, right? So like trying to flatten that out and making it more of a friendly experience to, to start and grow from that, you know, initial to, to somebody who eventually is a, a Drupal enthusiast and expert. Regarding the code base though, I guess, is there a significant change in some patterns and some structures there that would know, be atypical or? Keep talking. Yeah, so in terms of the code, I think we've already, like recipes is probably the most significant piece in terms of like having this different way of saying, you know, we're not just gonna provide like these, these tools that, that somebody can say like, if I know Drupal, I can configure these to do cool things, but more to say, let's provide capabilities and then that's a set of modules so like it'll install the code for you but also do the configuration so that you have a useful starting point and you can continue to like um you know tweak that to you know, like adding fields or like you know different ways of sort of crafting it to your specific set of needs as well i feel like it like i don't think starshot is going to significantly change how you as a Drupal developer write code for Drupal, or how code is distributed, or any of that. But I think it'll give all of us better tools that we can use to build Drupal sites. Um, you're still gonna write your module the same way, it's just that we'll have better tools to help distribute that, to encapsulate the, the decisions that we've made, to reuse them over time, and to surface those things so that uh, it's easier for people to understand how to build a site and what's going on. It, and you're not the audience for Drupal. It's ambitious marketers. Oh, shit! Everybody, everybody, this is the product strategy. And this, this actually, a lot of people, I don't know how many people actually read this, um, but this, the goal, we aim to get the goals by June 2027. So this is the pro the product strategy is long term. So we this is like an alpha version that we want to have at the end of the year. So there's going to be a lot of learning going on over the next few years. I mean, you can read all about the product strategy here. And I mean, for the official view, Tim. So I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to sound negative or I told you so, but I'm, I'm sitting here with, I think, a fairly unique perspective. We 
which is that I'm part of a group of people that 10 years ago sort of looked at where Drupal was going and said there's a whole group of people that are being left behind. And we and, and I wasn't a part of that original group. I joined later, but they formed background, right? And have been working for 10 years. Uh, we added Path Auto to, to Backtrack Core 10 years ago. We built a dashboard, we built a project browser, we built a lot of these things. And I have, there are, there are people who left sort of the Drupal community and became involved in Backdrop with a lot of sort of bitterness. My own perspective has been very different. And I want to, up, up front, I, I love the fact that the Drupal community is doing this. So I, I don't want to be putting a wet blanket on anything. And, and if anything, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to invite the conversation maybe a little later to make me feel better. <laughs> uh, so people come talk to me later. But um, basically, yeah, we, I felt comfortable like with my foot in both communities with the idea that basically, in my opinion, in my opinion, Drupal sort of made a decision 10 years ago, which was we're going to focus on this group of people, right? And it wasn't the, digital, the ambitious marketers. They sort of left them behind. And then, you know, we sort of said, well, somebody's got to serve those. And for 10 years, we've been working on backdrop and adding features and doing things. And now all of a sudden, Drupal's saying, oh, we've got to go back and help those people. And I think it's a great thing, OK? I, I love the fact that, 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 that Drupal is doing that. And I'm not here to say I told you so, but I am here to say that there's a group of us who are now kind of feeling like, and I, I've been watching, I, I've been hearing a little bit about Starshot from a distance. and. You know, it's like, that, that's fine, I get it, whatever, I'm going to keep doing my thing. But now I'm sitting at Drupal Camp, and I'm suddenly like, yeah, where, where do I fit in now? Like, for 10 years I've been trying to serve this, well, okay, again, not me for 10 years, I joined five years ago. But we've been really focused on this market with the idea that Drupal left it behind, and now I feel like, again, at Drupal's credit, you're going back and addressing it. So if anybody wants to talk to me about that later, <laughs> this is not a question. I'm not putting you guys on the spot. You don't have to respond to this. But uh, I have a backdrop session at the, the unconference. I might put backdrop slash starshot. And if anybody wants to come and talk to me about like what I should be doing in my head to sort of reconcile this, I would appreciate that. Well, we'll have a starshot buff, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll have a starshot buff. There's enough excitement around this. But that'll be a little different. That'll be different from what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Tim. Uh, and other, what, we'll do one more question from other Tim, I'll tell you. Or, or the first Tim. All right, I was going to ask this earlier, but I'll sort of uh, piggyback off uh, other Tim here. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, this gentleman in front of me mentioned the word enthusiast earlier. And so I'll try to make this as short as I can. But part of the reason Drupal became so popular for so long was hobbyists, enthusiasts, small business owners, nonprofits. Pretty much at the exact date that Drupal 8 was released, as Tim sort of alluded to, that stopped. And that's what led to backdrop. Um, and a lot of people leaving Drupal, and if you, you know, look at Drupal's popularity charts on, on uh, you know, Google Trends, it's been going downward ever since, and the installs have been going down. So I'm curious, from your perspective up there, if you all, or if the people involved in the Starshot uh, initiative, see a world where that comes back. And, and uh, opens Drupal up again to that, that sort of small group of people I just mentioned. Because it still is, you know, the word, you know, it, it, when Drupal 8 was released, the word was ambitious site builders. And you needed to be ambitious. And for a marketer, you're going to have to be ambitious. So, so I'm just curious if, if the thought is that this will open Drupal to a, a new slash old group of users that have long gone away. I'll say I personally am involved in the Drupal community because of that reason that you just described. I started at Wisconsin Public Radio and 
I personally am involved in Starshot because I want to be more welcoming, because I am sick of telling my mom and my uncle and my brother to go use Wix or Squarespace or something, even though this actual document for the project plan says we're not competing with Squarespace or Wix. I think there are a lot of people, yoga studios and whatnot, that will, that will come and will try this and use it and be able to host the site, get all of the awesomeness of Drupal, and if they want to take it the next step, like, I think a lot of us in the agencies are going to see people coming to us that built this site, and they're like, okay, and now I want even more, because that's what every single person does once they build their website, is they want more. So, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. I think nonprofits will be able to just use this, just like anyone else, even though the audience is ambitious marketers. I think it's an important acknowledgement by Drupal as a community that, like, yes, we did not play in that market for, like, since Drupal 8 came out, and maybe that was, either that was a mistake, or now it, at least it's time for us to revisit that decision. Um, and to do it in a way that continues to have Drupal's focus, you know, target developer audience still be those bigger sites, um, you know, like, or like an installation at a university or, or a government, or a government like agency, yeah. but while also making it possible for Drupal to be useful to build your local cheesemongers website. Because uh, right now, it's like all of us who have been using Drupal for a long time, we can install Drupal 11 and a bunch of modules and set it up, and then we can hand it over to somebody and they can build something with it. But why can't they just install Drupal and have it set up out of the box that they can build something? then they'll still be able to, like as an agency, you'll still be able to build all of these things that you're accustomed to being able to do um, and make all the customizations you want to. And that cheesemonger who now turned their business into a Fortune 500 company, their, their website can grow with them over time. Uh, and over, you know, it's like, yeah, they were able to click it together an experience builder initially. Later on, um, their you know, policies made it so that they didn't want just anybody creating landing pages at any URL on the site, so they removed that experience and replaced it with a different part of how Drupal works, but they can do that because it's still fundamentally Drupal. I wanted to also add, I think one of the things that, that I heard sort of asked was about being able to build it entirely in the browser. Part of the vision for Experience Builder is also being able to sort of like completely theme it within the browser, so not having to like write and upload CSS files or any of those kinds of things, but eventually to be able to, to, yeah, fully customize the entire look and feel of your website directly in the browser. I don't know that we'll see that in the MVP this year, but it's definitely, again, part of that, that longer-term vision. So We're out of time. We can talk about this. we got an unconference coming up. We'll have two hours to talk about it some more for those of you that really like it. Uh, but thank you so much for coming, uh, and... That's it. <laughs>